Thank you for coming. This is a really great solution for ovarian cysts that we've had in place since 1999. It's the result of years of research and development. We've worked super hard on it. It's a whole new way of thinking about ovarian cysts based upon new scientific evidence. It's an incredible system for getting rid of ovarian cysts. Women are living pain-free with no longer spending their life in bed. How do I know li women are living pain-free? I got this email. I was diagnosed with endometriosis, cysts on my ovaries and a tilted womb. The procedure then was a full laparotomy, a large incision through the abdominal wall to laser all the endometriosis and cysts. The cysts they found on my ovaries were huge, one being six inches in diameter. I was spending three or four days in bed with so much pain that, at times, I thought I would die, and then I was afraid that I wouldn't. I would regularly black out and have bad headaches and be sick. I would feel that my whole body was listless, immeasurably tired, and heavy. When it came to ovulation mid-month, I would look like I was six months pregnant, and again I was subjected to an awful dragging pain in my pelvis. My periods were so irregular. I was unable to plan anything. The only recommendation held out to me by the hospital was a total hysterectomy, which included removing my ovaries and cervix. I would then be put on HRT. First of all, the results of adhering to Dr. Eckhart's directions are nothing short of a miracle. I now have no pain whatsoever. And after a recent visit to the hospital for an ultrasound, they found no endometriosis or cysts. Wow. My surgeon was visibly shocked. The only thing that makes me sad is that I didn't discover Dr. Eckhart sooner, and perhaps I would have been able to have more children. But never mind. I am able to enjoy my life with my husband and son because I have more energy and because I no longer spend my life in bed. So I just think I'd like to share another testimony here. I am now in my third month on natural progesterone, avoiding xeno and phytoestrogens as much as possible, and taking the recommended supplements as per your suggestions in the little blue booklet. I am happy to report a huge relief of, of breast and ovarian pain from cysts. Two months ago, I could not even lay on my side or stomach. Now, there is no problem. The endometrial pain I have suffered with for 10 years is greatly diminished. I feel clearer in my thinking. My energy is coming back. My hair, indeed, is getting thicker. And I am feeling a new joy in life and very hopeful of even more improvements to come. Considering that half my life was consumed with endometrial pain from ovulation until menstruation, combined with horrible PMS, which I just thought was normal until I, until I read your literature. I now have an extra two weeks every month that I can actually function like a normal person, rather than being curled up in bed with pain and exhaustion written all over my face. So we have 18,000 customers that take progestel, progesterone, and 1,000 of these customers are ovarian cyst patients. And we have about a 90% success rate from 1999 to 2003. And a 90% success rate in the women who follow directions exactly. We've shipped to over 31 countries. Sweden, Norway, Finland, Iceland, France, Great Britain, Spain, Italy, Greece, Singapore, Japan, Korea, Australia, Malaysia, and Taiwan. So here's our product, natural progesterone, progestel. It's in a glass bottle, and it's just two ingredients, coconut oil and USP pharmaceutical grade natural progesterone. This is our product. We're really happy with it and our solution. So how do ovarian cysts form? During a normal cycle, a follicle forms on the ovary. The egg pops out, and the used follicle becomes the corpus luteum. During an abnormal cycle, or a cyst cycle, a follicle forms, no egg pops out, and the follicle keeps on growing to become an ovarian cyst. 
So first, I want to talk about the hormone that mimics pregnancy, progesterone. Then, I want to talk about the cause of ovarian cysts, namely xenoestrogens. So, progesterone helps ovarian cysts. And if day one is the first day of the period, you should take 60 milligrams per day of topical progesterone from days 6 through 26. The ovaries see the progesterone and think that you're pregnant. Therefore, follicle formation is suppressed and no cysts are formed. So, basically, taking high enough progesterone during the right time of your cycle makes your body think that you're pregnant. And so if you're trying to become pregnant, but you're really not, and make your body think you're pregnant, what you do is just add progesterone to a normal person, and your body thinks that it's pregnant. This suppresses follicle formation and ovarian cyst formation. So estrogen dominance is too much estrogen. And where is this excess estrogen coming from? Xenoestrogens. Xenoestrogens contribute to ovarian cysts. And xenoestrogens are chemicals or natural herbs that mimic estrogen, and they're strange estrogens. Progesterone can balance out small amounts of xenoestrogens, but progesterone cannot balance out large amounts of xenoestrogens. Progesterone with large amounts of xenoestrogens will make your ovarian cysts worse temporarily until you stop progesterone. So what is progesterone? Progesterone is the hormone of pregnancy and also occurs during the latter half of the cycle before the age of 35. Pro means for, gesterone means gestation. So progesterone means for gestation. Now it's important that you use natural progesterone. Natural progesterone is the same identical hormone your body produces. In fact, the fertility MDs, the test tube baby guys, routinely use natural progesterone to stop miscarriage. Natural progesterone does not cause birth defects. However, synthetic brand name progestins cause birth defects according to the physician's desk reference. Caution. Many over-the-counter and pharmacy compounding progesterone creams contain estrogenic herbs and preservatives. And so I'd like to share with you a very painful lesson that I learned. You have to be very careful because many of the over-the-counter progesterone creams and even the compounded creams contain estrogenic herbs and preservatives. Back in 1999, when I started treating endometriosis patients, I would tell them to buy an off-the-shelf progesterone cream. And then my patients would call me back and say, hey, doc, now I'm worse. What's the deal? So let me explain what happened. In 1999, my 70-year-old mother had a fibroid the size of a grapefruit. She had been on synthetic estrogen. So I took her off the synthetic estrogen. Now, likely if I had just stopped there and done this alone, her fibroid just would have disappeared. But I had read John Lee MD's book, What's Your Doctor? may not tell you about menopause, and he suggested to give her progesterone cream to make her fibroid disappear. So from his list of creams in the book, I bought one of them and sent it to my mother. Now after a month of using it, she called me back and said that her fibroid was bigger now. I was flabbergasted. So I began to study that particular progesterone cream that I had given her. They said they had purposely put rosemary into their cream for hot flashes, and it was a phytoestrogen. So my next question was, what is a phytoestrogen? And they answered that those are plants that act like estrogen. So I went back to John Lee MD's book and got a second cream and gave it that to my mother. And in three months, the fibroid disappeared. Then I became curious about the second progesterone cream. So I went down to visit my brother in Austin, Texas, and used the University of Texas computer database to check out the ingredients. 
And I found that this second progesterone cream contains sterile conium chloride. Now 3 cc's of sterile conium chloride taken orally by mouth causes fatal convulsions in adults. And that meant that if she ate a third of the bottle of that progesterone cream, she would die of fatal convulsions. Again, I was surprised. So I called them up and I asked them, how can you do this? And they answered, we're doing nothing wrong. This is a standard cream. We mix the progesterone in and package it. Then I started looking at department stores and found out the vast majority of cosmetics and toiletries contain ingredients that were not good for you. Some of these ingredients or chemicals could either be toxic, carcinogens, or hormone disruptive. Now, all three of these are different categories. So I started looking at the health food store. And I love the health food store. I go there and buy organic food, but many of their products had estrogenic herbs in them. And then I started looking at the compounded progesterone creams from the compounding pharmacist. Uh, many of them had parabens as a preservative. Now, parabens have been used for 30 years. They're not toxic, not carcinogens, and not hormone disruptive if and when taken orally. Parabens on the skin are not toxic and they're not carcinogenic. However, parabens on the skin increase little rat uteri, the uterus and the rats, by 22%. So parabens on the skin made my endometriosis patients worse. So xenoestrogens, chemicals or herbs that mimic estrogen, contribute to ovarian cysts. I'd like to show you a teaser video from Frontline PBS about xenoestrogens. Let's roll the video. Six years ago, marine biologists became alarmed at reports of massive fish kills on the rivers in this region. Every year, smallmouth bass were being decimated by some mysterious problem. Spring and fall, hundreds of fish would be found floating in the water, belly up. So you see this I caught up with Vicki right Blazer, mm -hmm. a fish pathologist with the U.S. Geological really Survey, who was trying to figure out why the fish were dying. What do we got here? So here we have this large discolored area in the yeah. liver. Yeah. And then you see all these little white spots. Here's another totally discolored area. And that's a signal of some, some bigger problem. Yes, when we see a really high prevalence in a population, that indicates there's some problem going on in that water. And when Blazer dug deeper, she found a surprise. One of the major and most interesting findings was intersex in the male bass. When we look at the male gonads or testes, what we find is immature eggs within the male testes. So you got sort of feminization of male fish. Is that a big alarming finding in marine biology, aquatic biology? Yes, and that has certainly attracted a lot of concern and attention. Scientific studies have linked abnormal mutations in marine creatures, like intersex, to exposure to chemical compounds that mimic or imitate natural hormones in the body. These chemicals are called endocrine disruptors. Endocrine disruptors are very, very potent chemicals at infinitesimally small quantification. I mean, you're talking about parts per million or parts per billion. They interrupt the normal way in which the body controls everything from growth and development to thyroid function to reproductive function to estrogen levels, testosterone levels. So they're very, very important, and they are a, a deep concern because there are so many of them now. There are thousands of these worrisome chemicals that have gotten into the environment, and one reason is that they're part of everything we do. The list of things that bring these organic pollutants into our bodies is a long list, and it ranges from home care products, soaps, toothpaste, cleaning agents in the household, to things we put on our lawns, the things that we use all the time, the plastic industry, the rubber industry, uh, lubricants, fuels, uh, the highways. When you see scientists like Vicki Blazer, 
cutting open fish, finding intersects uh, in the male fish, 